What I want to talk to you about today is dowsing and some of the common problems that novice dowsers face when they first start out. Hello there, my name is Tim Walter. I'm, that's Jasper. I'm a house healer and an alternative life coach. And what I want to talk to you about today is dowsing. These are dowsing rods. And hopefully you will have seen in some of my other videos how I've used dowsing. But I want to show you how to hold the rods and talk about some of the common problems that novice dowsers face when they first start out. Because sure enough, like most things, we all share the same problems. Now I'm gonna do this in several sections in this video. And the first section is called how to douse for absolutely anything. Now typically, of course, most people come across dowsing when they hear about people looking for water. There are various tools to use. I like the rods. I like to use these, our simple L rods, and you can make your own from wire coat hangers in that sort of shape. I use dowsing almost daily in my job as a house healer. And what I do is I work from home here in the Yorkshire Dales in England, but I can work on any property anywhere in the world. All I need is a basic floor plan with which to focus my awareness and basically tune into that site. So that gives us a clue as to how does dowsing work? Well, we don't know for sure, but it seems most likely that it is actually a subconscious process. Now, a lot of people, of course, dismiss dowsing, and actually it's the very term that a lot of these critics use to dismiss it that actually I think is how it works. Critics that work from a scientific method say, well, you, you're not dowsing, that's, you're making that move. But the key to a good dowser is actually removing themselves from the awareness of rods moving and allowing the subconscious to actually take over. Now the subconscious muscular movements are called the idiomotor effect. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I believe it's id from the psyche. Uh, motor obviously to do with the muscular movement uh, of the body. That the subconscious is picking up information from the zero point field, probably from the quantum field that is, the zero point field, and then the allowing the stimuli to go through to mu tiny muscular movements in the arms and wrists and the hands to actually enable the rods to move. And of course, the other thing about that theory, if that is the way that dowsing works, is that it ties in with a lot of spiritual thinking, where it says that we are one in mind, because a lot of the information we can pick up using dowsing is only attainable through this sort of mind-body process. How to hold your dowsing rods. These are the rods that I use. These are um, typical L-shaped rods, but they're a bit heavier than you would normally find in most shops. These were made for me by my mentor, Hamish Miller. Um, he was a blacksmith and he made a lot of these for a lot of different people. Now, what you do when you're dowsing is basically hold them out like a couple of six shooters right in front of you, two rods at a time. Ideally, start off nice and relaxed in the shoulders, bring the hands up, ask a question such as, am I standing up? and the rods will respond. There we go, yes. They'll come together for a yes. That's me now moving them manually. Come together for a yes, and they'll come apart for a no. That's usually the way it is. First thing, as a novice dowser, first thing you'll find is when you start, now I'm gonna do these manually, okay? When you start to douse, you may find that just one, the edge of it one, a little bit like that, just moves slowly and gently and gradually, hardly any response at all. That's absolutely fine. Don't focus on the rods themselves when you ask a question. Ask the question, focus on the question, and ask yourself something that you know to start with just to get the rods to move for yourself, okay? And as you practice, 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 practice by using the most tangible things you can find. Don't go plunging straight away into earth energy. Practice for a day or so. Get your rods working really well for you so that instead of just that little tiny movement that you might get on one, you get a good swing. So a good swing would be something like, so yes, that sort of response, okay? And don't forget that if it's a no, so if I say, am I sitting down, they'll come apart for a no, okay? How you hold these particular rods. These were made to balance. They balance in the hand. It's quite a loose feeling, it's quite a loose grip and it just balances sort of on the finger. It needs to be sort of balanced in the hand. It looks a bit peculiar, but allow it like that. Just all you're doing is allowing it to rest against, use the finger as the fulcrum, rest against the lower palm. That's the way it works, okay? That's the way you want. That is quite, quite loose, quite uh, able to swing. Okay, 
Now, this is my trusty dowsing rod holder in the garden. So these, these are more like the normal standard sort of rods that you're going to find in a shop. And for these, you just simply hold them. You know, these haven't got a, a cover on the handle either, but just hold them and allow them just to balance and they'll move quite freely. You want to allow them to move freely. If it's windy, they will move against the wind. If you've got some that actually have like a sheath around them, so they're like in a little handles, there you will be very, very twitchy. They will really respond very quickly. And what you need to be careful of with those, you've got to start with them nice and still before you ask your question, because otherwise they're just kind of, you know, collapsing rather than being focused, uh, intentional move. Personally, I don't like those particular rods, but there you go, it's personal taste. And the real thing about this is that you want to ideally try some different weights out. These are really quite nice because these are a good average weight. So these are rods that I use for beginners. Um, they're not too long. Um, you can get some that are extendable, which are quite handy. So you slip them in your pocket because that's the real problem with dowsing rods is how to carry them. And the, really, that's the biggest problem that you have with dowsing, how to carry the rods. I was always taught to keep my dowsing rods parallel with the ground, parallel with each other and parallel with the ground. Now I see that some people are teaching that actually they should be a little bit leaning down like this. But I still personally like to keep them level with the ground. Dowsing do's and don'ts. Now, you might call me a, bit, a little bit negative, but I'm going to start with the don'ts. And the first thing is, if you can't get the rods to move straight away, don't panic and don't give up. It took me three days of trying to actually get the rods to move, and that actually is quite exceptionally long time. Practice, as I've said before, and start with the more physical things and start with things that you even know the answers to, just to get the feeling for the rods. Ask somebody to hide things for you, then go and find them. Don't make it difficult, know roughly where it is, pop a little something under a rug. You know what you're looking for. This is the way that you learn and this is the way you become friends with your rods. Once you've been doing it for a little while and you think it's all great and you're off and it's all lovely, you suddenly find that you start to get the wrong answers. Things just aren't going as well as they did to start with. Why is that? It happens to nearly everybody. And what actually happens is, as you open up this doorway into your subconscious, your subconscious actually wants to test you. It actually wants to verify that you're committed to this. It's a strange way of putting it, but it is like the universe saying, OK, this is, this is, your, this is your desired way of accessing your intuition. Let's see whether you're really committed to it. And so what that means is that you actually need to then spend a little bit of time really understanding what's going on. And the only way to do that really is to actually experience it and then work your way through that phase. It doesn't last for long. The big thing is around this phase is you'll start to ask the same question twice. Never, ever, ever do that. Because what happens is inevitably when you ask the same question twice in exactly the same way with exactly the same thinking process, you get the opposite reaction. If you get a yes to start with, you get a no the second time round. It happens all the time. Now I have a theory about why that might be, but I'm not going to share it here. I'll share it in another video at some stage in the future. Now some things that you should do, some do's. We've done the don'ts, now we've got the do's. Do practice. Practice, 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 practice. Practice with different types of dowsing. Practice a little bit of map dowsing, a little bit of remote viewing with your dowsing. Practice a little bit of spiritual dowsing if you want to. We discuss that in other videos. Practice with timing. Practice asking questions. <laughs> Practice asking questions of what might happen in the future. Those are tricky. Practice finding things. But above all, just come back to the type of dowsing that you feel most comfortable with. Practice finding water, for example. Practice with earth energy. If you're with somebody else, they can verify your results as near as damn it, although you're living in your own subjective realities. They be aware of that. But the key thing is here with dowsing is that you have to allow your mindset to change. You need to be in the meditative mindset. So your brain needs to actually change frequencies to allow the intuitive side to come across. It's not about just dropping into a theta mode or a beta mode or whatever. Have a look at the video that's about brainwave patterns elsewhere on my channel and you'll see what I mean. It's about allowing the dowsing mindset, the healing mindset, the channeling mindset to be prevalent so that the dowsing can work. Dowsing is a very safe 
way to access the power of your subconscious and your intuition. And when we access the subconscious and the intuition, then we can achieve change because it, we become mindful, we become aware of how the subconscious is working in our life and we consciously change our choices. And this is where dowsing can really help us maneuver and act as a really good mechanism for wellness. We're in this age where science and spirituality are merging. And you know, over the years, I've met quite a few science-based logical thinkers that are actually very keen dowsers. And they are the ones that have said to me, it doesn't matter how it works. If it works, just use it. And I can guarantee you that if you try dowsing, you're gonna find it's really, really helpful in your life. And if you've got any questions about it, let me know.